Is it game over for GameStop? GameStop lays off a large number of managers. It's, uh, yeah, it's not looking too good for GameStop. We're going to talk about that in this video. This is Neon. Welcome back to Clownfish TV. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We really appreciate your support. We've grown tremendously in the last couple months, and we thank you all for that. So we've been hearing rumblings. Actually, I have uh, friends who have written me privately, and uh, they actually told us that, that their uh, friends and relatives were uh, given bad news that they were going to be laid off from GameStop. Now, GameStop's not been doing well for quite some time. And uh, a lot of that has to do with, you know, games going digital. People just aren't buying physical copies of games like they used to. So there are several articles out here in the last couple of days uh, talking about GameStop laying off a large number of managers. This one's coming from Game Rant. Video game retail chain GameStop has been in financial trouble for quite some time. Recently, this trouble materialized as a 36% drop in GameStop stock, which put shares at their lowest value since 2003. Now, it seems that these hardships are leading to layoffs, as reports suggest that more than 50 managers have just been let go from GameStop. I, again, I had a friend write me privately and told me like a week ago that I think it was their brother was uh, laid off from GameStop. So yeah, it's not looking too good. Over on the GameStop subreddit, employees are checking in with one another to see if their district or regional leaders have been let go within the last day. District and regional leaders are management level positions at GameStop, and many employees are reporting that they have lost both. Furthermore, some employees suggest that their stores have simply been reassigned into different districts, which puts them under the supervision of different leaders. Related, report says GameStop's dying. Analysts predict when it will go out of business sooner rather than later, right? Uh, indeed, it appears that there is a restructuring now taking place at GameStop. An image that elaborates on this restructuring has recently surfaced. Reports suggest that this image is of a message that was circulated to certain GameStop employees and it focuses specifically on the GameStop Reboot Transformation Initiative. God, this sounds like something out of an anime, doesn't it? GameStop Reboot Transformation! Uh, part of this initiative is to realign field regions and districts in an effort to reduce its cost structure and build efficiencies into its field leadership organization. It's basically trying to trying to save its own ass. Uh, they're 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 throwing people overboard to try to salvage what's left of GameStop. This means that GameStop regions and districts have been expanded, thus reducing the number of field leaders required to run the organization. Skeleton crew. The message continues by stating that more than 50 field team leaders have been impacted and will be leaving GameStop, uh, the GameStop team soon. Additionally, the message indicates that these leaders will be missed. But the decision to restructure is necessary to help reduce costs. Uh, a need to reduce costs is certainly understandable. GameStop reported a $673 million full year loss earlier this year. In July, it was revealed that GameStop is partnering with uh, RGA to develop new concepts for stores, which will look to encourage players to visit physical GameStop locations and bolster business. However, before these reimagined stores can become a reality, it seems that some amount of fundamental restructuring is required and they need to order more pop vinyls. Lots and lots more pop vinyls. And part of this restructuring appears to now be taking place through redefined boundaries. So what is this going to look like? I don't know. Uh, you know, I mean, look, you know, time marches on. I, I have fond memories, not of GameStop so much, but of uh, EB Games, of Electronics Boutique from my youth, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. I'm feeling very nostalgic for Electronics Boutique, but, you know, look, uh, you know, our kids, they buy mostly downloads now, and GameStop doesn't really have, like, a large vintage uh, assortment of cartridges, you know, it doesn't really make any sense to go to GameStop to buy physical media, and frankly, I think their prices are high. Their prices are high, right? When we go to GameStop, we don't go to GameStop to buy games we go to GameStop to look for like pop vinyls and blind boxes and blind bags and stuff like that it's become a pop culture store just like comic shops I mean it's pretty much the same thing as comic shops now you know there, there really is no need for a dedicated video game store at least not selling new games if they dealt in vintage stuff and we actually do have a really really good vintage game store around here it's called a video game exchange and they've actually been in some video game movies and stuff uh very very cool store they deal strictly in vintage games if it was something like that i could see a market for it. kind of like comic shops now if they're dealing in vintage or dealing in back issues there's always going to be a market for that stuff 
with collectors, but the new stuff really doesn't have a lot of value because you can download it. You know, you're not going to run out of a new title because you can download it. So, you know, there are a lot of them, I think, are just sort of um, surviving on on pop culture junk like a lot of the uh, a lot of the comic shops are now. Now, Yahoo seems to be a little more positive. They're talking about how they're laying people off in the the long road to financial recovery. Uh, they run the entire letter here and uh, they're talking about GameStop's woes coming from its years-long reliance on the used game market. Yeah, nobody really cares. Is there really a used game market now? Again, other than for collectors to deal in like vintage NES and, and Sega stuff, uh, arcade hardware, that sort of thing, you know, pretty much every legacy game is available now on Steam or it's available through emulation on consoles. You know, we buy our games through the PlayStation Store. We don't we don't buy physical copies usually. So the company's bread and butter was leveraging the supply and demand realities of a video game ecosystem that existed in physical copies. The advent of digital distribution and its massive growth over the current console generation has disrupted it so severely that GameStop has had to chase new forms of revenue and refurbish mobile devices board games and collectibles. Yeah, it's basically become a half-assed comic shop. And comic shops are half-assed comic shops now. Uh, this has led to a retail presence that felt cluttered and disorganized. It is. It's, um, you know, you walk into a GameStop now, we have, I think we have one left around here, several of them closed, and you walk in and it looks like Hot Topic. You walk in, it's all blind boxes and, and hats and t-shirts, and it looks a lot like this, and the games are in the back. Oh, you want video games? Yeah, we got those too. But mostly it's this stuff. Some blogs are already calling the time of death. They said there's pre-mourning for friendly local employees and serendipitous physical discovery. That's true. I mean, sometimes you're just browsing titles and you're like, hey, what's this? Oh, it's only three bucks? Yeah, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it and see what, what's there. I, I mean, with digital, it's hard because uh, digital, you kind of have to know what you're looking for or it's whatever's promoted on the front page. You know, so yeah, I think I think that that's, that's definitely going to be missed. Uh, thinkgeek.com was having problems. They shut down their website, and now if you go out to their website, they're part of GameStop. So it's all sort of like congealing, and I'm, I'm waiting for you know comic shops to sort of follow suit. You know, if they don't go out of business for a lot of you know like comic book retailers, like you know maybe Forbidden Planet or something, sort of merging into some bigger uh, you know pop culture entity, because it just seems like everything's sort of uh, congealing. But yeah, Think Geek officially closed down its website after 20 years. Uh, this was what uh, last month last month it will migrate its operations over to gamestop's website instead in the meantime the store is holding a 50 percent off moving sale now it's strange because think geek is probably you know the merchandise and think geek is probably what was keeping a lot of the gamestops afloat but again this is probably part of the the trimming of the fat i guess um you know gamestop has owned think geek since 2015 and that's kind of when it seemed like GameStop blew up with the pop vinyls and the t-shirts and the board games and all the other um, physical clutter. Now, before GameStop was GameStop, and we're gonna, I'm gonna date myself here, uh, it was Electronics Boutique, at least around here it was Electronics Boutique. You know, being in Pennsylvania, uh, we had EBs in every mall. And I remember the very first time I walked into Electronics Boutique, I'd heard about it from my friends at school. And when we were kids, if you wanted to buy video games, you had to go to KB Toys, you had to go to Woolworth. God, we had Woolworths. Uh, we had, you know, we didn't actually have Toys R Us where I live, believe it or not. But we did have a whole bunch of stores where you could go to, and they had the Nintendo section, the world of Nintendo, and that's where you go buy your games. One day, as if by magic, Electronics Boutique appeared in the mall. Just poof, there it was, and it was like an entire store full of games not just world of nintendo but they had the new game systems the sega genesis the turbo graphics even the neo geo like all this crazy stuff that i'd read about in uh, electronic gaming monthly but i'd never actually seen in person uh, they had it there it was great like even even atari links like nobody freaking had an atari links that i knew of but they had them at electronics boutique and you know then they uh, of course electronics boutique all became gamestop in the uh, let's see, I think it was mid-2000s, GameStop bought them out, and they transitioned all of the electronic boutiques into GameStops. And the GameStops around here are disappearing at a, a shocking rate. I mean, there were several that were open one day and closed the next, just within last year or two. So they're definitely trimming 
but I just wanted to go out and show you guys these this this electronics boutique catalog from I think 1990. Was this 1990? Yeah, this was, and I remember this catalog. I remember being a kid and reading this catalog and being like, oh my god, I want all this stuff. And check this out, uh, Fancy Star 2, 69.99. Like these games were freaking expensive. I don't think people realize how expensive these cartridges were back then. Uh, you know, and it's kind of funny because I was, you know, I was just talking about the Turbo Graphics. Oh, freaking! I love this. It's the very first PC game I ever had was Secret of the Silver Blades. I freaking love that game. But I was talking about the Turbo Graphics, which you know, for its time, was crazy expensive. The games were crazy expensive. You know, sixty bucks for a CD game back then. Uh, four hundred dollars for the Turbo Graphics unit, and uh, I'm actually really excited because they're bringing a Turbo Graphics 16 in March 2020. It's got 50 games. It, they're bringing this out, so another mini console. And I was talking about that on Twitter last night. I was, I was really excited and uh, got into a conversation. I think with Yellow Flash, and we were talking about how the Turbo Graphics was was pretty cool. And uh, I've got quite the growing uh, tiny console collection thanks to Geeky. She keeps buying me these tiny consoles. I got like every freaking tiny console that's come out gonna add this one to the collection too um but yeah just i mean there was something really cool about going out to a store and and finding these games and looking at the art on the boxes and you know kind of building your wish list and and you always had this feeling that the games were much better than they actually were <laughs> like you look at the box art and you're like oh my god this is probably the best game ever look at that single screenshot look at those graphics and then you'd get the game and you're like wow this is kind of ass you know, um, and some places rented games, you could rent games, but, uh, you know, you always had this wish list of, of games that you wanted. And I had, I had all these, man, I had, I had, uh, Felios, I had DJ boy and I did not pay that much. I actually paid 17 bucks a piece for him, I think, but I had so many of these games, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's sad. It's sad to see physical media go just like comic shops, you know, just like comic shops. I mean, this, this, was a huge part of, of my childhood, you know, going to the game store. Like our kids really don't know that because, you know, Squid King grew up in a time when, when he was young, you know, very, very young. I think the first machine we really played a lot was the Wii. And they had so many games that you could just download and, and emulate. And that's what we did. We had a ton of uh, N64 games that we downloaded. Like I said, very few of the video games that we own now are physical copies or physical discs. I mean, for the most part, we buy the downloads. And I think eventually that's that's where everything is going to be. Everything is going to be a download. Uh, PC games. I mean, I miss you know buying a game and having like a big map with it or a tip book or something really cool like that. Uh, I still remember you know, the Secret of Mana, which had this really cool map. I remember buying Fantasy Star 2, which had a map and had a tip book. Uh, other games, I think it was Dragon Warrior, had like cloth maps, you know? I mean, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. Lunar, uh, Lunar Silver Star Story box set for the PS1 had all kinds of crazy, crazy stuff with it. And that's just that that era is, is coming to a close. Like we're not going to have these really cool... Um, you know, really cool physical copies of games anymore. People aren't going to be able to window shop, go into a store and actually look at all the boxes and try to decide what games they want. They can't talk to the employees and ask them what's good. And it, it's very much, this is very much a part of my childhood, like arcades and like comic shops. I mean, that was like the, the holy trinity, I guess, for me as a kid, as a nerd, the comic shop, the arcade, and electronics boutique. Um, and, and now we're going to be losing this i think very very soon so very sad very sad for the employees working there not surprising it's just you know time marches on uh time marches on and gamestop just doesn't really have a place anymore again there's always going to be, be a place for for vintage games uh for people who are collectors uh just like comic books but as far as you know the general audience the general audience now buys games on their phone. You know, they buy games through the app store. They don't spend time going into a store and wandering around and trying to find something anymore. And it's, it is sad. It is sad. It's sad to see it go. But uh, I think it's going to happen sooner rather than later. Let's see what Game Rant says. When do they say that GameStop will completely go out of business? According to this article on Game Rant and Michael Pachter, uh, they think that GameStop will be around for at least another 10 years because the PS5 will have a disk drive. Project Scarlet will have a disk drive. But once physical media disappears from games, there's no more purpose for GameStop. There's no more point uh, 
to GameStop existing. Again, I think there always will be, you know, a market for for classic video games and for retro games. And uh, again, Game Exchange in Dubois, Pennsylvania, very cool store. But we've reached the end of the line. I think, you know, I, I think 10 years is pretty optimistic. I think it's pretty optimistic. So we'll see. We'll see where GameStop goes. Uh, but definitely the, the gaming market's changing just like comics and, and everything else. You know, we're, we're getting older, man. We're getting older. Time marches on. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants here on Clownfish TV. We'll talk to you later. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.